if I told you that this Toronto trip, it all started with a vision board, would you believe me? Boo! <laughs> yeah, this album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I never amount to nothing. To all the people that lived above the buildings that I was hustling from that called the police on me when I was just trying to make some money to feed my daughter. So good, and all the struggle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's all good, baby, baby. Uh, it was all a dream. I made this vision board just before I decided to leave teaching. It seemed such a huge dream then. I remember sharing it with my counsellor and with my sister, with no clear strategy about how I would even get to live this life. How would I be on the buffer stage showing a film that I had made? But 12 months later, this battered and bruised vision board stands realised. A snapshot of how my life is. The adventure starts. We're starting. We're on our way to Canada. the most is Izzy Harris um, and Sura. I'll put all the links of the people that I'm talking about down below. Good morning. Oh my god, there's a taxi coming. So today is the day. It's the day of the screening. I am super nervous. Like, I can't eat. I'm so nervous. Excited, but actually I'm really, really nervous at the same time. It is really scary putting your creative butt out there in the world for all your peers and other humans to see. And the worst is, not the worst, 
the thing is you get to see people's reaction as they or hear their reaction as they're watching it that is what was really freaky about the documentary screening yesterday a nice shot and then you almost get run over by a what, what is that thing called? It's road sweeper. <laughs> In 2016, I had a mental meltdown. Um, I wasn't able to speak for, I don't know, felt like for ages. And um, I just suddenly realized that despite all the challenges and all the achievements, I got degrees, I you know, taught in schools with gangster wannabe, get, wannabe girls. I had um, dealt with the Essex boys. I'd done all this stuff, but I didn't realize that actually true strength isn't just in all these accolades. It's not in just your trophies. And this stereotype of being a strong black woman actually isn't fully explained in the media. That also your pain and you showing up and sharing your pain and talking about depression and anxiety is part of being strong. And actually yesterday when I was reflecting on the movie, of the film, I was thinking actually this is not isolated to just a black person's experience, this is everyone's experience. In a time when everybody wants to put a filter on everything and make it look pretty and everything hashtag beautiful, really we have to really peel back the layers and be willing to say it's, it's okay not to be okay. And um, I just hope that that inspires not just black women everywhere, my mom, my grandma, my children, my daughter, even every woman, as we're all women showcasing today, I hope you will embrace your strength. You've alluded to some of the answers after you spoke after your videos. Some of us are a little emotional. <laughs> I'm, you almost got me, Megan. <laughs> I just wanted your tears. That's all I wanted. I know. I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> Thank you for the energy. <laughs> so the first question, and I know some of you have kind of alluded to it. Get dressed in like a blink of a second, and a woman like this with these things, and you know, then you've got the stereotypes and all these things. And I just felt like being a woman was hard. So when I had my daughter, I was just like shocked, and I really didn't. I I, I found it really challenging, if I'm honest. And I think the move, what I, making the film made me reflect on actually a relationship I had with my mum and the healing that needs to take place in order for me to have a better relationship with my daughter. And there are certain conversations like you were alluded to, that there were certain things that I felt like my mum should have shared, maybe things to do with anxiety that have probably, if I look back in my history, have actually been there, but no one's been bold enough to say anything. I can see all those traits in my sisters, but nobody's saying anything. And it made me really reflect and think, actually, I've got to go back and do work with my mom so that I can have a better relationship for my daughter so that when she goes into the world, she's going to marry somebody else. She's going to have a loving relationship that is not filmed from a place of anxiety or fear or questioning or doubt. She's going to be full of self-esteem and the brokenness that I felt. Sorry. She's not going to feel, you know, she's not going to feel. I mean, the world is a jacked up place, but at least I can minimize that impact, right? 
and that's one thing that hit me and the second thing that hit me was also that the doubts that I'm telling myself about making that process that that film actually I need to understand that that's just the inner critic that I need to gradually kill like I need to be bold enough to stare that critic in the eye and say that for the past 30 years you've ruled my life but you will not rule anymore Would you like to lead everybody in a little bit of finger dance improv before we head out? What if, what if it was your elbow, you guys? What if your elbow was just leading you places? You know what I'm saying? Like, where could it go? <laughs> Travel with her. There she is. Doesn't it feel good? Yes. Move your body. I was so scared. I've never been so nervous. Like, and it was so long. Four hours, eight hours. What? Eight hours? That? Yes, I've been sitting there for eight hours. Okay, yeah. He has done a sterling job of literally being the best cheerleader ever. Thanks. Yesterday was our 11th year wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. I say it like all the glory belongs to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Somewhere on the corner of my vision board was a pic of my husband and I. It was taken when our children were just a figment of our imagination. They were very serious, unanswered prayers. The picture was taken on the last holiday abroad we ever had together. We argued throughout that holiday. We couldn't see then what we have now. And we've made that mistake thousands of times over. We mistake seeing what is in front of us now as a vision of what will be. Christmas 2018 was a typical example of that, but to be fair, it was the worst point of our marriage. We were both red-eyed, screamed out, both tired and both ready to quit, like out, out, out. I laid in bed, envisioning a life without him. What saved us and is still saving us? Well, vulnerability. The ability to say that this is my pain. Don't fix it, sit with it. This is how I feel. Don't fix it, sit with it. This is me. Don't fix me, sit with me. Listen, we are still learning and I'm even scared and nervous sharing this. I'm scared that somehow we will jinx it. Then I'm reminded that we got here, not by being cautious, but by taking huge love leaps.